hi there. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Also, welcome to the Afterscape. And it's not even a cool Afterscape where spice tribes and face paint fight each other in souped-up muscle cars across the forbidden zone. But make no mistake, we are in the dystopia. Because here's the situation, fellow American citizens. Overnight, members of the National Guard had to sleep next to their weapons on the floor of the Capitol building. Now, that's terrible to see, but what's additionally heartbreaking about this is that some of these soldiers are sleeping next to a plaque commemorating the Civil War troops that were quartered in the Capitol in 1861, which happens to be the last time troops had to sleep over to protect the legislators. So take heart, National Guard. Yes, your bodies and your bravery and your service are the primary defense against a raging mob of homicidal yahoos. And yes, some of the folks you've sworn to defend have been actively inciting those seditionists. But if the country survived, there's a pretty good chance you're getting a plaque. In fact, there's so many troops guarding our capital right now that the 15,000 mobilized for inauguration equals three times the number of U.S. troops in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Well, the United States is known for sending in troops to prop up failed states. Hopefully, we'll greet ourselves as liberators. And with this massive military protection in place today, the House of Representatives impeached the President of the United States. I feel like I just took down my decorations from the last impeachment. And I'll tell you about all of it in tonight's edition of the reboot of my segment no one wanted, but everyone desperately needed. Don and the giant impeach to go fast. We're furious. Donald Trump loves Nazis. Very fine peaches on both sides. Today's vote is historic because for the first time, a president has been impeached twice. Makes sense. This president loves having seconds. Also, he's a traitor. I'm just saying this man has an appetite for the destruction of our institutions. The impeachment article passed today charged the president with just one thing, inciting violence against the government of the United States. That is a pure dereliction of duty. That's your, like your doctor yanking out your IV or a lifeguard drowning your grandpa or the host of your book club failing to buy box wine. We were counting on you, Brenda. Read the Constitution. Now, the president of the United States incited his mob to attack the United States government. It reminds me of the climactic finale of Star Wars. Fire at will, Commander. At us! It has been noted that his impeachment comes just one week before the president's term expires. Do you know how bad of a job you have to be doing to get fired while you're getting fired. I'm sorry, Mark, it's just not working out. We appreciate everything you've done for the company and you're building a gallows to hang me. Okay, there goes your severance, buddy. Now, the Democrats allege that the president gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government and that he threatened the integrity of the democratic system. It's true. And then he got elected. The Republicans, for the most part, talked about how the president's followers attacking to keep him in power is bad. It's not that bad. And they reached a new high in low with California Republican congressman and guy at the mall who won't leave the massage chair, Tom McClintock. McClintock made a statement about California's leadership before he even opened his mouth with a mask that read, this mask is as useless as our governor which I'm sure he means as a slam, but if you read the science, it's actually a compliment. Governor Newsom, congratulations. He believes you're 80% more effective than no governor. Then McClintock opened his mask hole and tried to play down the insurrectionists. If we impeached every politician who gave a fiery speech to a crowd of partisans, this Capitol would be deserted. That's what the president did. That is all he did. He specifically told the crowd to protest peacefully and patriotically, and the vast majority of them did. But every movement has a lunatic fringe. Lunatic fringe? 
There were tens of thousands of people in that murderous mob. The day after the riot, a poll found that 45% of Republican voters backed the attack on the Capitol building. That's not a fringe. That's almost half the outfit. If you wore a suit that was 45% fringe, you'd be arrested for public indecency, but at least we'd be able to see through your pants to know you don't have any balls. The attack on the Capitol was so reprehensible that 10 House Republicans supported impeachment. And Washington Republican Jamie Herrera Butler spelled out exactly what's kept Republicans silent for four years, fear. Fear tells us what we want to hear. It incites anger and violence and fire. But it also haunts us into silence and inaction. To which her GOP colleagues responded, shh, he'll hear you. She tried to reassure them. Truth. Truth sets us free from fear. Truth doesn't guarantee bad things won't happen, but it does promise to always prevail in the end. It has no shadows where darkness can hide. With truth comes love, and we could use that right now. My vote to impeach our sitting president is not a fear-based decision. I am not choosing a side. I'm choosing truth. It's the only way to defeat fear. I never thought I'd be so excited to hear somebody say that they believe in objective truth. Even though she's a Republican, the Congresswoman is still willing to admit the sky is blue. And most of the electoral map is too. Oh, by the way, she's right. The truth will set you free unless you committed sedition. Then the truth is going to put you in jail for a long time. Herrera Butler joined other Republicans who had previously announced their support for removing the president from office. Yesterday, New York Representative John Katko said, I cannot sit by without taking action. I will vote to impeach this president. Illinois Republican Adam Kinzinger explained, the president broke his oath of office and incited this insurrection. I will vote in favor of impeachment. And Michigan Congressman Fred Upton declared, I would have preferred a bipartisan formal censure rather than a drawn out impeachment process. I fear this will now interfere with important legislative business and a new Biden administration. But it is time to say enough is enough. Thus, I will vote to impeach. Forcefully said. It reminds me of the stirring scene from Spartacus. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I would have preferred not to have to be Spartacus, given how important my own identity is to me, and the fear that we might all suffer punishment at a time when Rome should just move forward. But enough is enough, so I reluctantly I am also Spartacus, I guess. But by far, the most significant statement was this. There has never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States. I will vote to impeach the president. That from Liz Cheney. She's the head of the House Republican Caucus. She's the third ranking Republican. She's the second ranking Cheney. That's how awful this president is. He has made me grateful to Liz Cheney. Can we impeach him for that? <laughs> oh, it burns. <laughs> now, unlike the first time Trump was impeached, this impeachment might not be dead on arrival in the Senate, thanks to Senate Majority Leader and guy creeping out everyone else at the strip club. <laughs> Mitch McConnell. Reportedly, McConnell has told associates in private that he believes the president committed impeachable offenses and is leaning toward convicting him. That's all going to be in his memoir, Leaning Toward Courage. Turns out the president unleashing his supporters to kill Congress was a bit of a turning point. Now the senator apparently hates the president and never plans to speak to him again. Oh, dang! Being impeached is one thing, but getting the silent treatment? From Mitch McConnell? That's got a sting. Imagine seeing your old pal Mitch and not being greeted with the usual sunshine of, hello, Mr. President. <laughs> McConnell's apparent support for impeachment gives cover for others, meaning a dozen Republican senators and possibly more could ultimately vote to convict the president. Yes, and at least a dozen and possibly more if there's a sale at Bob's Spine Barn, they're vertigrate. One Republican House member who's sticking with the president is Alabama representative and man who wants you to overthrow democracy, Mo Brooks. Brooks isn't upset that the president incited the mob because he was incitement's opening act. 
Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Now, Brooks refuses to apologize for that speech, claiming that when he said kicking ass, he was talking about a donkey. Same way I'm talking about a chicken when I say Mo Brooks is a complete cock. <laughs> Brooks has since changed his story and claimed that his remarks were about winning the 2022 and 2024 election. Come on, Mo. You don't get to rile up a crowd and tell them to kick ass at the Capitol. And then when they do say it was about voting two years from now, that's like CNC Music Factory claiming that the song Everybody Dance Now is actually about going home, getting some rest, so you can boogie to your heart's content at your cousin's wedding next summer. And you're not invited, Mo. Brooks has a much bigger problem than incitement to insurrection because he's implicated by the architect of the rally itself, Stop the Steal activist and Sammy Davis Hitler, <laughs> Ali Alexander. Before the riot, Alexander went on the internet to share the credit. I'm the guy who came up with the idea of January 6th when I was talking with Congressman Gosar, Congressman Andy Biggs, and Congressman Mo Brooks. It was to build momentum and pressure and then on the day change hearts and minds of Congress peoples who weren't yet decided or saw everyone outside and said, I can't be on the other side of that mob. He just implicated Republican Congressman Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, and Mo Brooks, also known as the Three Cooges. This name, Mo Brooks, will now go down in infamy. Luckily for him, CNN's Aaron Burnett mixed up her Brookses. Charlie, you, you heard Ali Alexander, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, Mel Brooks. It is incredible when you see this, and, and certainly the words of Mel Brooks. <laughs> Come on! Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks! What has Mel Brooks ever done to appeal to fascists? Don't be stupid, be a smarty. Come and join the Nazi party. Okay. But unlike the president, he was joking. Now, another profile in Jell-O is South Carolina senator and Denethor with a haircut, Lindsey Graham. Immediately after Wednesday's violent push, Graham came back out of the Senate safe bunker and took to the floor to let everyone know that he's against almost being killed. All I can say is uh, count me out. Enough is enough. I have searched my conscience and examined my values, and I have come to the profound realization that I enjoy breathing. Graham out! Except Graham back in. Because yesterday, Lindsey flew on Air Force One with the president to his speech. So, six days after taking what seemed like a stand, he hopped on the president's plane. Okay, somebody stuffed me in the overhead compartment. Good thing my spine folds so easily and I contain less than three ounces of courage. Oh, hi. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Sam B. and the star of Normal People, Paul Meskel. But when we return, meanwhile, stick around. <laughs>